just reactively, because we are reactively sampling like we have it in the past and gone out uh, and initiated additional sampling uh, going out every day, essentially, since uh, we were notified that this still had occurred uh, starting on, on December the 10th uh, of last year. But in advance of that, starting in last April, uh, we have three trend sites, um, sites that the department monitors on an ongoing basis, monthly in, in this case. Two of them are indicated on the, the larger map where you see most of the Swanee River down to the Gulf of Mexico. The uh, trend site right there at the state line at the Georgia 31 on the Wissapuchi. And then the trend site where the Wissapuchi comes into the Swanee River. In addition to sampling those locations monthly, irrespective of what's going on uh, up in Georgia or at the Valdosta plant, we've added not just looking at the bacteria samples, the E. coli and the fecal coliform, uh, we've also added human uh, wastewater <coughs> tracers, uh, chemical constituents like sucralose or um, primidone, uh, other pharmaceuticals, some of which go through treatment plants like sucralose. Uh, is a sweetener, you find it in Diet Coke and, and, and other sodas, and the same reason that it doesn't impact your body is the same reason that we'll go through a wastewater treatment plant. It doesn't react very well uh, to those types of processes. So if you see sucralose in the water, you know that there's a treated wastewater sitting. We have seen sucralose in, in those waters, that, and that's not surprising. You see sucralose in a lot of the ambient waters uh, that we do sample. When you start seeing some of these other products, uh, other pharmaceuticals, um, acetaminophen uh, is, is another example, that do break down in wastewater plants. If you're seeing some of those compounds, then you know you're dealing with an untreated wastewater signal, where water has escaped, um, gone around, bypassed, overflowed, what have you, from, from wastewater treatment. And it can kind of give you a clue as to what are we saying. Yes, we're seeing uh, elevated bacteria, but is that bacteria coming from a, a human wastewater source? And these other compounds can kind of help fill in the gaps in that picture. So we've added those additional uh, tracer elements to our standard suite uh, at these 30, well, there are only two on your map. The, the other trend station is where uh, Highway 41 crosses the uh, Alapaha over there near, near Jasper. Um, and that's, that's not on, uh, on this map. But at those three train stations, we have uh, proactively added those additional markers. We don't have a lot of information yet. We just started that last April in order to talk about trends or what we're seeing over time. But we expect to be able to analyze that data as more and more of it comes in. In response to this particular uh, overflow event, you have uh, two maps in front of you, one on showing kind of a zoom in. Uh, to the wastewater plant and to the, the lift station uh, that, that overflowed. And what the different colored circles on this map and the larger map show is the combined efforts of sampling by the Swanee River Water Management District, the Florida Department of Health, the Florida DEP, and the city of Alabasta. The different colored circles show sort of uh, who has done the sampling at which of those locations. And as you can see, this is a joint effort to get all hands on deck to sample every day over the holidays. Um, uh, took, took some coordination, um, but, but we've done that. The unusual aspect for this bill, the seven and a half million gallons, uh, did not occur during a time of high flow, of lots of rain and an overflow at the plant, which is sort of what we've traditionally seen. Um, at, and in those cases, we can see sort of dilution and we can kind of trace that spill down the lap hall, down with the Wissapuchi, and, and we would expect to see elevated levels and then those elevated levels continuing down through the sites where, we, where we've been uh, sampling. In this case, immediately after the spill, uh, starting on December the 10th and through the 18th, we saw elevated levels of bacteria at those three or four locations up in Georgia. <coughs> And then that was it. Um, those samples since the 18th at those sites, at all the sites along with Lakuchi, um, we have not seen um, the elevated uh, levels. So that, that plug of 7.5 million gallons, we, we, we're trying to find it. <laughs> we're trying to, to see where, where that's showing up. And there's a, there are a lot of theories about that, that it could be um, sitting in tributaries, waiting for additional rain to come and flush it down. We may, we may have seen that because we've just started seeing elevated 
levels of yes, I'm sorry, Monday's sampling. We went out on the 6th, and we get those results back essentially the next day. So um, yesterday we got those results back. We finally um, were seeing elevated levels at that trend site at the state line on the width of Kuchi. So we're continuing to go out um, this week uh, between, well, DEPs went out Monday, today, and, and tomorrow. I'm not sure who's going out the remainder of the week, but those discussions are, are going on pretty much uh, as we speak. But we will be sampling you know, pretty much daily uh, until we can, uh, again, get it all clear. And I think that's what I wanted to say just in terms of a brief overview of sort of the sampling that's happened in response to, to this bill. I'm happy to answer any, any questions or, or at least attempt to. Okay, let me add, if, okay, we got samples. Mm -hmm. We know it's there, somewhere. So what what do we do? I mean, I mean we, we've got the data, so <coughs> we've got a problem. Uh, the purpose of this meeting is, okay, now what are we going to do about it? That, that's what we want. That's why we're here today. What are we going to do? What is Georgia going to do to solve this problem so it doesn't roll down here? Right. I'm sorry the Georgia officials are not here. Okay. I wish they were here. And I don't want to put y'all on the spot, but y'all talk to them maybe more than we do. Uh, I mean, enough is enough. Okay? I mean, that's, you know, that's, that's where I am. And I think my colleagues on both sides of me feel the same way. What we, you know, I don't, I think we've done enough testing to say we've got a problem. <coughs> now, Jordan, what are you going to do about it? And if you don't solve it, we're going to call on our federal officials and we're going to say, right. you know, let's get, let's solve this problem. So, from, from the regulatory perspective, I know in terms of what the consent order wants to come out on it, obviously they're making comments and ensuring that their enforcement is strict enough. Um, you know, I wish it would be great if we did have some jurisdiction over that, but we don't. But I can promise you that we work a lot with EPA Region 4. So if anything that we suggest that winds up not showing up in a consent order, if we make comments and doesn't show up there, that's going to be my first call to the Blake and Carol. Um, and I know they have, you know, in Region 4, in, in terms of overseeing the Clean Water Act, Georgia has its sovereignty on that. So it comes down to the question, Senator, of when the enforcement comes out, we make comments where we think it's inappropriate, and that's that's the distinct time where the state of Florida has its options, um, and citizens and counties have their own options. I mean, there's always potential legal recourse. They can also make comments on the consent order and those matters. Now, I know we've worked since I've been in this role, going coming up on three years now. Right after I first got in our role, when we started, Governor Scott had started the pollution notification bill that the legislature passed. We worked out with Georgia an agreement because they're not required to publish pollution notifications when they have spills, like Florida and these are. We worked out an agreement with them that whenever they had a spill, they would call my district folks so my folks would put it online so that that way the public at least would have access. So that was a good first start. Um, we know the consent order they entered into uh, has a lot of overhaul work to it. You know, we've looked at the existing consent order. And this consent order, I look at it. If this happened in the state of Florida, I would look at this very differently because it was a third party actor, which is a very unique, it's an odd scenario. It wasn't a failed age infrastructure that you normally see and attributed to. So that's why, from my perspective, what we want to look at is when this consent order comes out from Georgia, what do they actually have in it? I'm unsure of legally what they can do against third party actors. I don't know. And in the state of Florida, if a third party contractor breaks the sewer line, I have a legal authority and I enforce against whoever has the permit for that sewer line. Now they may go in civil court and go sue the third party contractor and get their money back, but from my perspective that's not my problem. I need it fixed. And if I may, I want to add on that because so that's what my, my position has been or thoughts are is regardless of who done the work, the permit sits in the lab under the authority of the city of Wild Austin. So any issues that occur from that, either from negligence from another individual or a party, the permittee is still the city of Mount Austin. So they have ultimate responsibility for that. Is that correct? That's how it happens in the state of Florida. I did say I'm a recovering lawyer. I'm not licensed in Georgia. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's my understanding that, that that's what I've been told is that's the law in Georgia as well. Another question. When you keep referring to a consent order, 
are you talking about you're expecting a new consent order to be coming down to the city of Valdosta because they were already operating under one whenever they built their new facilities. So are, are you thinking that another consent order will be coming down to them? Yes, we're expecting a new one to come down, and I don't know if it'll be an amended version of the existing one. Sometimes they do that. They take the existing one and add an addendum, or if they will create a new consent order and two will run forward. I mean, that's a decision they can make. Legally, <coughs> both options under the Clean Water Act, I believe. I can speak to that. Is my under our experience with the Clean Water Act, it's Georgia is doing a new order. So you will see a new order um, for comments. About how long do those take? Are we talking months here before they receive a consent order, or does this happen quicker than that? I know, I, I know you can't give me an exact timetable, but I I'm wondering it, weeks or months. Um, I do expect it to be a shorter time frame because we have met with Georgia actually consistently since you all, since we had a call with you all previously, um, and. Uh, they were already pretty far along in developing an order, and um, so they're looking for weeks, not months. Okay, thank you. I, I would have, if you don't mind, have a question for EPA. So educate me a little bit on this. So that's been my understanding since the city of Valdosta and the federal environment, uh, Georgia's EDP. EDP. I thought it was EPA, um, entered into a consent order in 2012. And that agreement was, I, it was my understanding, there was some type of civil or le uh, legal action taken against the city of Valdosta. And that consent order was an agreement that they would start investing revenues and monies and, and improving their infrastructure and building a new treatment facility. And am I, am I correct in that? If I might, can I give a little bit of history on the consent orders? I think that might be helpful at this time. Um, so you are correct. The original consent order with Valdosta did require um, some assessment of their collection system. It required a relocation of the wastewater treatment plant to higher ground, and it addressed so, it, so the three issues that were immediately identified as the major concerns, the major causes of the sewer overflows was the um, forced main needed to be built, the wastewater treatment plant needed to be moved to higher ground, and the number of the pump stations needed to be rehabbed. So those three main things were under that first still active consent order, um, along with the assessment of the collection system. The new order will address what we now know about the collection system, as well as oversight of the operations, including third-party contractors. And what would be the consequences of violating or, or working outside that new consent order? What would happen? So that is still, one. I'm very limited since it's still a draft order and it's not been made public. Um, so it's still enforcement confidential. And so I can't, that's still being determined what the consequences would be. That means this meeting is very timely because um, I will take back what your thoughts, concerns, frustrations, ideas, inputs back to that oversight responsibility that we have. And I'd like to add that I believe most of the constituency here and folks here today have a firm belief that there hasn't been any consequences to the city of Valdosta's failure of their system over the past years. And we have been, and I don't like to use the word patient somewhat, because of the current consent order, and they have been making improvements, 
that we wanted them to invest their revenues and monies in improving their system to keep the poison in our environment. Okay, but that hasn't happened, and and I know a lot of the folks I talk to say, you know, it's time. There are some consequences here, and we're hoping that those consequences will be significant for the city of Boston, that they have a firm understanding that these types of situations are not just a, a comment and a statement in their, from, their, from their media outlet that says, well, sorry, we had another spill. We're trying not to let it happen again. Because that's, I'll be honest with you, that's what we've been getting. And, uh, in the last year, I feel like the task force, we've done some, made some positive work in working with the city of Al Austin. I don't know where that's going to go from now, after the day or the night or whatever, but um, as far as the overflows from rain events, now this is a whole different umbrella, a whole different environment. Not only now am I worried about every day of a major rain event, a year ago, I was thinking, if we get three or four inches of rain, we get the spill. Okay? Now I'm worried about a person going out working on a lift station, don't do their job, and they walk away, and nobody's coming behind it to supervise that and make sure the work's done properly. And then we're getting millions of gallons of raw sewage. And that's, that's affecting every citizen setting here today. And that is where it hits home. You know, we, we've got, we need the assurance from our regulatory agencies that one, Madison County, Taylor County, Hamilton County, Swanee County, all of these 12 counties down that touch this, our rivers and our systems don't have to bear the burden on our backs to remedy these situations where we feel strongly that this is a state and it is a national issue. And, and we're, we're wanting the, that state and that federal <coughs> backing and support <coughs> and enforcement. Am I correct in that state? Correct. Can, can, I, can I make a quick, ask a quick question and a comment? About nine 